I'm Joe McPhee, and this is the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame inductee profiles, and my guest is Lawson Davey. Lawson was born in 1959 in Nipawa. He was a slick fielding shortstop and second baseman for 19 years in the Manitoba Senior Baseball League with the Nipawa Cubs and the Nipawa Farmers. He was a first team All-Star seven times and a second team All-Star six times. He had over 300 for 14 seasons. He was named to the MSBL's 40th anniversary second All-Star team as a second baseman. He won a silver medal at the 1977 Canada Games with Team Manitoba in St. John's, Newfoundland, and a bronze medal at the 1985 Canadian Senior Baseball Tournament in Kentville, Nova Scotia. He later coached the Nipawa minor teams to three Manitoba titles and took the Bantams to the Western Canadians in 1999, and he took midget teams to... Uh, Alberta in 2002 and to Maple Ridge, B.C. in the same year. Lawson was inducted into the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame in 2008, and he was also named the Manitoba High Performance Coach of the Year for 2002. Welcome. So, tell me about your start in baseball, Lawson. Well, my start, uh, my official start probably is soon as I could put on a glove or throw a ball. I don't know when Jimmy White and I started out on the farm. We were pretty pretty young. My official start was probably my first day of school when I was five years old. Uh, that's how I was so easy to get down. We were three miles, of course, from the country school. and School didn't matter, but I knew that's that's where the ball game was, so Mom didn't have any trouble getting me to go to school. So that's, that's where I, uh, I guess, cut my teeth playing ball was uh, in the country school uh, with, of course, some guys are quite a bit older, and uh, I think it was a good environment to uh, to learn the game. Mm -hmm. You learn pretty quick, or you or you got hurt. Okay, let's put it that way. And when did you first begin to get some coaching? Uh, that would have been uh, well. We, actually, that was pretty young too. We had a, a little bit of a, a pee wee uh, thing uh, going on in town. It wasn't real organized, but we went to a couple of tournaments when I was pretty pretty small, a recreational director at that time, I think, ran the team. Uh, as far as uh, Little League, I think I started when I was nine. Uh, my dad was the coach. We actually uh, had two new teams in the Little League. There had been four established teams, and uh, there was quite a influx of players, I guess. So we had two new teams started when, when we went in. So we had an expansion team. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, the teams kept their players from year to year. So you ran into some fairly long-standing powerhouse, uh, especially if you got three or four sets of brothers uh, on one team. They, you could get a, almost a dynasty there in the four years. So we started from scratch, but uh, by the last two years, I think in my last two years of Little League, we were the champions. So, but it was Dad that was actually started as my coach and and was for most of my minor hockey okay. or minor baseball. <clears throat> but you soon graduated to intermediate level. Uh, intermediate baseball. Yeah. I played intermediate baseball, I guess, first off for Don Smith when I was about 14 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, we organized a team called the Red Sox uh, just to give some, actually more to give guys that were were out of minor baseball and weren't quite capable of making the jump to senior ball. Mm -hmm. uh, gave them a chance to play. So that was uh, that was probably my first uh, taste of, I guess, senior intermediate playing against adults. Yeah. And uh, well, the next jump was to the Nipawa Cubs? Yeah, I guess roundabout. There was a lot of lot of uh, minor baseball. I played a lot of mm -hmm. organized minor baseball, uh, just not just with our own team, but uh, was fortunate enough to get picked up on a lot of uh, a lot of uh, teams that went to interprovincial and uh, Manitoba championships. So uh, I had I probably a lot of exposure through uh, through those avenues before I actually got a chance to play in the senior league. So okay. it helped prepare me, I think, a little bit. Yeah. So what what teams would pick you up then for these provincial playoffs? Uh, minor baseball teams uh, throughout. I, I played with Winnipeg teams. I played a lot with uh, with Joe, which are down in Morden. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times uh, Joe recruited me to go. Uh, Minnedosa, uh, I played, played there. Uh, in a provincial championship, so at that time you could, uh, I guess, if you were uh, if you were known, then teams once they got to two championships, you they were allowed to pick players, and I was fortunate enough to get, get an opportunity quite a few times. Good. 
and uh, you were one of the youngest members selected probably to the uh, Kansas Summer Games team in 1977. Yeah, I think there was a junior 21 and under team. Uh, I was 18 at the time. Uh, Wes Colson from uh, <coughs> Amiot or Oak River was on that team well. He was my age. Kerry Candy from Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. I think we were maybe the three youngest players. Okay. And uh, was this your first trip away from home? Uh, pretty much. First time on an airplane. <coughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. It was... Uh, I took a little little ribbon from the guys who've been on the plane before. Once we got in the air, they they uh, they could see how green I was, and uh, there was a few comments made to put a little terror in my heart. But once we got going, it uh, that was good. And you came home with a medal. We did. We had uh, we had a, a really good group. We had uh, pretty well evenly. Maybe maybe one or two more rural players and city players, but. Yeah. Uh, we had a, a good camp uh, prior to going. I uh, had a weekend over in Brandon where we played in a tournament and had a, a camp. And uh, to Joe's credit, I, I think uh, he was, Joe Wichar was the manager at that time. And uh, probably to our chagrin, because we all, there were rural guys kind of knew each other. And of course, the city guys were, uh, would have would have known each other. But when we showed up at Brandon University for our weekend and we were billed a tutor room and Joe made sure there was one city slicker and one country bumpkin, as he said, the room together, and I think that made a big difference. Okay. Everybody, uh, you had to gel then because after when you went out in the evening, yeah. you had your your roommate, and you you know it, it just uh, ended up the whole team kind of gelled that way, and uh, it ended up uh, we had a real uh, just not a good bunch of ball players, but a, I think a real good group that uh, that was able to uh, to gel and and. Uh, play well when we got there. Who was your coaching staff? Uh, actually, we just had two that year. Joe Wichar and Gus Bice was the name of our coach. All right. Yeah. And when you came back from there, you joined the Cubs again and uh, played in MSBL for mm -hmm. a few years with the Cubs. I had played a couple of years, actually, before I'd started when I was 16 All right. with the Cubs when Bill Fraser was still... Uh, it was kind of the change. Uh, the Cubs had had a big year in 74. Uh, right. And I guess that was kind of the finale for a lot of the a lot of the players. Uh, decided that uh, that was a good spot to to, to end, I guess. So in uh, in '75, uh, there was a need for for some younger blood to fill some spots. So uh, there were five or six of us, I think, that ended up younger guys, uh, midget age up through through Bison at that time, uh, that ended up playing with the Cubs that year. So that was a that was quite a Quite a jump at that time. The league at that time was was a, a pretty pretty strong league. The import pitching was was quite strong. Everybody had some good import pitching, so uh, uh, it was an eye opener. Yeah. Sixteen years old right. uh, to to start at that. Yeah. And what position were you playing then? I was playing mainly uh, mainly shortstop mainly at that shortstop, time. I think yeah. Terry Oliver was in his last year, and we kind of switched off. Mm -hmm. Game to game. Okay, and they called you out on the mound every once in a while, didn't every, they? Not at that time, but once uh, yeah. the next year we took a leave of absence. I guess all the older players decided to pack it in, and we just didn't think we could field the team. So uh, we went into the intermediate league uh, the following year in 76, and then in 77 uh, uh, got organized again, mm -hmm. hired a, a new uh, coach to help look after the team, Lauren Lilly, a Hall of Famer from Brandon. Right. He, he brought a few uh, guys from Brandon as well, and we got back in the league. And uh, at that time, uh, we didn't have a lot of depth on pitching staff, so I had to, for the next few years, probably right into the few couple, first couple of years of the Farmers, I did do a little bit of pitching when when, uh, when we looked down the bench, I guess, and there was nobody else. <laughs> oh, well, okay. I think uh, I recall talking to you once, and your highlight of your pitching was an opening day victory over the Clovers. Well, it was, yeah, well, it was a highlight for a lot of reasons. We didn't win a lot of games, and I know it was one of Lauren's highlights being the Brandon, uh, mm -hmm. Brandon guy himself. Uh, we didn't have, we had imports coming, but they uh, they didn't show up uh, yet. So we basically went in with the local yokels into Kinsman Stadium against a pretty good Brandon team at the time, and for whatever reason, whatever I was throwing, they weren't hitting it that day. Okay. And uh, yeah, it was a bit of a thrill. We came out of there with a win. What what pitches did you rely on? Uh, just fastball and curveball pretty yeah. much at that okay. time. I could throw it reasonably hard back when I was young, so that's probably what I relied on most. But that day something else must have been working. Mm -hmm. Good. And uh, so when the farmers made the entry in the MSBL, you joined the farmers. Mm -hmm. 
Is that a, a hard transition to make at all? Not at all. Uh, I had played with uh, the farmers. These are actually the guys I grew up with, a lot of them. Okay. Uh, and had played a lot of ball. I played a lot of ball with the farmers tournament ball whenever I wasn't busy. Mm -hmm. uh, they'd be going to intermediate tournaments or whatever, and if they needed some help, and quite often they'd give me a call and if I could go. So I played a lot of a lot of ball, and we curled curled together with two or three of them in the winter. So it was a very easy for me. It was easy for the whole for the whole team, and it was I think for the, those of us that had been involved with the Cubs, we were just looking for some help. Mm. We'd struggled along uh, with a few faithfuls there, just uh, very, you know, difficult to field a competitive team. And, and uh, we could see, uh, you know, with the guys that were on the farmers, that it wasn't going to take too long once we got them involved that we were going to be, uh, we were going to be competitive. It was just going to be a matter of time. Yeah. Okay. okay. So switch to second base. Was that precipitated by a sore arm? It or? was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I started developing a little arm trouble. Uh, I don't know whether it was from pitching or, or what it was, uh, but I'd had it off and on, I guess, for most of my life. But it it got to the point there. I, I think it might have been '86 or whatever that uh, it just uh, it was sore all the time, and uh, that was about the time Merv Bone started playing with us, and okay. he was capable of playing shortstop, so it made it possible for me to get a little closer to first, and mm -hmm. and. Uh, I enjoyed playing there. It's a lot, you know. You have a lot more time when you're over there than yeah. you do uh, than you do over in shortstop. So it, it was a transition I was willing to make. Okay. Okay. Now, where did you usually bat in the lineup? Uh, early in my career, probably I was a you know three four hitter mm -hmm. a lot of the time. I was I guess looked at as a, as a, an RBI uh, sort of player, but uh, I think probably in the second or third year with the Farmers. Uh, we kind of made a bit of a switch, and uh, I think Garth was struggling to find somebody to hit in the leadoff spot, and uh, I always had a reasonably good eye. didn't mind taking a base on ball, so uh, we thought we'd give that a try, and uh, I ended up in the leadoff spot, and that's where I stayed. Okay. Well, you had a, a very good on-base percentage for your career, so was that something that you really worked at, is, is, is taking pitches and getting on base? I think once I went to leadoff spot, I, yeah. I probably did more so. I would, I didn't, I never minded hitting with, with two strikes, mm -hmm. which uh, some some guys, you know, they don't they don't like hitting with two strikes, and the first good pitch they want to be swinging. Uh, for me, uh, I never bothered hitting with two strikes. Maybe I'd have, I'd have hit a few more, you know. Balls or long balls, if I'd have been a little more aggressive. But where I was hitting in the lineup, we had guys like Mike behind me, so mm -hmm. that was kind of my job. And uh, if I could get on with the walk, so be it. Okay. Now, after your baseball playing career, you went into coaching. Uh, you had a son playing ball still, so mm -hmm. at the minor ball level, so you were involved with that. Well, I was involved when he started. To be quite honest, I yeah. tried doing both for a while. It probably precipitated my my finishing my own career to an extent it got to be too much but uh, I started coaching Scott when he was five and uh, I coached his last game in minor ball when he was 18 years old. Okay. In fact the following year when he was playing with uh, I think the Cubs intermediate I climbed up in the stands and started to watch the game and something didn't feel right and I realized that I'd never watched him play a ball game from the stands. From the stands I'd never 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 had him in a ball game I wasn't in the dugout mm -hmm. so that was different. Yeah. And you had some success with those minor Midget Bantam teams. Yeah, we had uh, we had three or four years of kids here at Depaw that were really dedicated kids. Had uh, started right from the ground up and and had been coached well, I think, right from the beginning. And uh, were very capable, uh, dedicated group of parents, which you always need. And uh, starting, uh, we we had good teams right through. It was finally uh, '99, I guess we we got by. Uh, Russell was always the team that we had trouble, uh, I guess, getting by, and we hosted Bantam provincials that year and uh, got in the final and actually Altona knocked off Russell we didn't have to and then we uh, we beat Altona quite handily that year in the final and uh, and got to go to Paducah Alberta for our first time yeah, great okay well thank you very much Lawson you're welcome this has been Joe McPhee from the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame inductee profiles my guest has been Lawson Davies